Hi, my name is Elvira, and welcome to our educational webinar on Robertsonian translocations. Being a carrier, or having a partner who is a carrier, holds certain reproductive risks that should be discussed with board-certified genetic counselors to help you make informed family planning decisions. To prepare young couples for a more meaningful discussion during their first genetic counseling session, this webinar will explain the most important aspects pertaining to Robertsonian translocations. During this webinar, we will provide a refresher on genetics, we will talk about how Robertsonian translocations happen, and how being a carrier can affect fertility and future children. Lastly, we will finish off with the Q&A section with a certified genetic counselor. Make sure to pay close attention throughout the presentation so you can participate in our quiz questions and test your understanding. Feel free to pause or rewind the video at any time. Let's begin! Human beings are made up of trillions of cells. Inside every cell lies a nucleus that stores chromosomes made of a molecule called DNA. These chromosomes contain genes that collectively determine a person's traits. You can think of genes as recipes that are instructions to make up the components of your body such as skin, muscle, and organs. Humans typically have a total of 46 chromosomes, which are inherited from their parents. 23 of these are passed on from your mom, and the other 23 are passed down from your dad. Here you can see a typical human karyotype, which is a complete set of chromosomes in a cell, and it has 23 pairs of chromosomes. Our chromosomes are numbered from 1 to 22, where chromosome 1 is the largest chromosome and chromosome 22 is the smallest. The last pair of chromosomes are the sex chromosomes, which determine your biological sex. Women have two X chromosomes, and men have an X and a Y. The Y chromosome is not really shaped like a Y, but is named that to distinguish it from the X. Chromosomes that participate in Robertsonian translocations are called acrocentric chromosomes. Acrocentric chromosomes have one very short P arm and one very long Q arm. The five human acrocentric chromosomes are 13, 14, 15, 21, and 22. Before we proceed to the next section, check your understanding by answering the following question. In this section, we have discussed that humans have 23 pairs of chromosomes and that Robertsonian translocations occur between acrocentric chromosomes. Can you tell which one of these two chromosomes is acrocentric? If you answer that the chromosome on the left is acrocentric, congratulations, you're absolutely correct. Remember, acrocentric chromosomes have very short P arms and very long Q arms. If you answered incorrectly, don't worry, feel free to rewind and watch this section again. To summarize, in this section we provided a genetics refresher and explained that DNA is stored in chromosomes and provides instructions to make the components of your body. The complete set of chromosomes in a cell is called a karyotype, and it helps you visualize all 46 chromosomes that one inherits from their parents. Finally, we showed you the different acrocentric chromosomes in our cells, which have one long arm and one short arm. A chromosomal translocation is a genetic change in which a piece of one chromosome breaks off and attaches to another chromosome. There are two types of translocations, Robertsonian translocations and reciprocal translocations. The most common is a Robertsonian translocation, which is found in about 1 in 1,000 people. In this type of translocation, the long arms of two acrocentric chromosomes fuse together causing us to lose the two short arms. As we learned in the previous section, 13, 14, 15, 21, and 22 are all of the acrocentric chromosomes in our cells. What does this mean for you as a carrier? 
Robertsonian translocation does not always cause health problems, and many people will never know they have it and go on to live long, healthy lives. Typically, Robertsonian translocations are referred to as balanced translocations because there is no change in the total amount of DNA and all important genes are still present. Luckily, these small arms do not contain many genes and losing them does not have a negative effect. Let's go through an example together. The most common Robertsonian translocation takes place between chromosomes 13 and 14 and makes up approximately 75% of all Robertsonians. As mentioned in the previous section, an unaffected person has 46 chromosomes. As you can see here, if you are a carrier over 1314 Robertsonian translocation, you will have 45 chromosomes instead of 46. You will have one full copy of each chromosomes 13 and 14. You will also have a fused chromosome, which is the long arm of 13 fused to the long arm of 14. When looking at the difference between these two, we can see the only big difference in a Robertsonian translocation is the location of the long arms and the two missing small arms. How does this happen? This could either be passed down from one of your parents, meaning that they're also a carrier of a Robertsonian translocation, or this can be a new translocation present only in your cells acquired by chance in your DNA. Now that you are well versed in the features of a Robertsonian translocation, answer the following questions before moving on to our section on family planning and fertility. Which one of these is a Robertsonian translocation? A, B, or C? Remember, a Robertsonian translocation takes place between two acrocentric chromosomes. Option A is incorrect because it shows a translocation between a typical chromosome and one acrocentric chromosome. Option B is also incorrect because it involves two typical chromosomes and zero acrocentric chromosomes. If you guessed option C, you are correct. Here we see a translocation between two acrocentric chromosomes, which characterizes this as a Robertsonian translocation. To summarize the second section, we explained Robertsonian translocations and how they happen. We showed you how these are balanced translocations and that no important genes are lost if you are a carrier. Finally, we went through an example of the most common Robertsonian translocation, which happens between chromosomes 13 and 14. Carrying a Robertsonian translocation does not typically have a negative effect on your health. However, if you are planning to have children, there may be implications for fertility and for the health of your children. Firstly, when considering fertility, we need to understand how reproduction works on a cellular level. Human reproductive cells are created during a process called meiosis. Meiosis is a type of cell division that takes place in the reproductive organs. This process produces gametes, which are reproductive cells such as eggs and sperm. For example, in women, this takes place in the ovaries, where whole cells with 46 chromosomes divide to create egg cells that have half of the normal number of chromosomes, which is 23. In men, the same process occurs in the testes to produce sperm cells. The sperm and egg, each with 23 chromosomes, fuse during fertilization to create a new cell with 46 chromosomes called a zygote. The zygote will go on to develop into an embryo. This is how your child inherits half of its DNA from the parent who provides the sperm and half from the parent who provides the egg. When you carry a Robertsonian translocation in your cells, a few different things can happen to it during meiosis, creating different effects on your sperm and eggs. 
Let's look at another example using the same translocation between chromosomes 13 and 14 as we saw in the previous section. We're just looking at what happens to chromosomes 13 and 14. We can assume that all of your other chromosomes are behaving normally. There is one normal copy of each of chromosomes 13 and 14 in your cells, as well as one fusion chromosome, which is made up of the long arm of 13 and the long arm of 14 fused together. During meiosis, your chromosomes are supposed to divide evenly in half, with each sperm or egg receiving one copy of each chromosome. Because two of your chromosomes are fused together, it can be hard to divide them up between the two new cells that are created. Where does this fusion chromosome go? Let's look at three possible scenarios. In this scenario, the copies of chromosomes 13 and 14 are divided in half as evenly as possible. One new cell carries one normal copy of each, while the other carries the fusion chromosome, meaning that both cells contain the genetic information from both chromosomes. In this second scenario, the chromosomes are divided unevenly. One new cell carries a normal copy of 13 and the fusion chromosome. The other new cell carries only a normal copy of 14, meaning that it is missing a copy of 13. In this final scenario, the chromosomes are also divided unevenly in the opposite way to the previous scenario. One new cell carries a normal copy of 14 and the fusion chromosome, while the other carries only a normal copy of 13 and is missing a copy of 14. Any of these outcomes can occur at random every time meiosis takes place. As a carrier of a Robertsonian translocation, you likely have gametes in your body which look like all three of these possible scenarios in roughly equal proportions. Around one-third of your gametes have a normal karyotype or balanced translocation, while around two-thirds have an extra or missing chromosome. Any one can fuse with your partner's sperm or eggs to create a zygote. When each of these types of gametes fuse with your partner's gamete, they can create zygotes with different numbers and arrangements of chromosomes. Some of these arrangements are not harmful to the developing embryo, while others are. Let's take a look at the possibilities. When the gamete that is carrying one normal copy of each chromosome meets your partner's gamete, they fuse into a zygote that has a normal number and arrangement of chromosomes. In this case, the baby will not carry the Robertsonian translocation. When the other gamete of that pair, which carries only the fusion chromosome, meets a partner's gamete, they create a zygote that carries one normal copy of each chromosome, as well as the fusion chromosome. This child will have the same chromosomal arrangement as you, the carrier. They will carry the Robertsonian translocation, but will likely not experience any negative effects because they have a normal amount of genetic material. When one of the gametes that is missing chromosome 13 or 14 meets your partner's gamete, they create a zygote that only has one copy of that chromosome. Remember, we normally have two copies of each chromosome. This is a condition called monosomy. Embryos with monosomy are generally not viable and will result in an early-term miscarriage. On the other hand, when one of the gametes with an extra chromosome meets a partner's gamete, they create a zygote that has three copies of one of the chromosomes. This condition is called trisomy. Embryos with certain types of trisomy develop with some abnormalities, while others are not viable. Trisomy 13 is called Patau syndrome and is associated with severe medical issues. Children with Patau syndrome do not generally live beyond two years of age. Embryos with trisomy 14 are not viable and result in early-term miscarriage. You may have heard of the common condition Down syndrome, which is also known as trisomy 21. 
Children with Down syndrome have three copies of chromosome 21, which causes developmental delay, unique physical features, and possible medical complications. There are a few other extremely rare chromosomal conditions that can affect children of people with Robertsonian translocations. We won't cover them here, but you can ask your genetic counselor for more details. As you can see, being a Robertsonian translocation carrier can have a variety of effects on your pregnancy and children. Some of these scenarios can result in miscarriage. Pregnant carriers of 13-14 translocations do not generally experience miscarriage more often than the population average, but it is possible for both male and female translocation carriers to experience infertility or recurrent miscarriages. Women who carry translocations are more likely than men to experience infertility, pregnancy loss, or to conceive children with trisomies as a result. Before we proceed to the next section, let's test your understanding. Which of the following zygotes carries a trisomy? As a reminder, a trisomy is when a person carries three copies of a particular chromosome. The correct answer is B. This zygote has three copies of chromosome 14. If you answered incorrectly, don't worry. Feel free to rewind and watch this section again. In summary, sperm and eggs, also known as gametes, are produced by a process called meiosis. Robertsonian translocation carriers can make several different types of gametes. Some of these gametes have a normal number of chromosomes, and others do not. A sperm and an egg fuse together to form a zygote, which can develop into a baby. When a gamete with an abnormal number of chromosomes is part of a zygote, it can affect the health of the baby. A monosomy is when the zygote has only one copy of a particular chromosome. A trisomy is when the zygote has an extra copy of a chromosome. Luckily, there are approaches available, including genetic testing that can help you to manage risk and have healthy children. In this last section, we'll briefly explain some of these options. If you or your partner are pregnant, you can request genetic testing of your embryo to determine if it carries the Robertsonian translocation or any of the other chromosomal conditions we discussed above. There are two different types of prenatal diagnostic testing, chorionic villus sampling, CVS, and amniocentesis. CVS can be performed between 12 weeks and the end of the 13th week of pregnancy. Since the placenta originates from the very early embryo, it has the same genetic makeup as the baby. This fact allows us to sample a portion of placenta and analyze the chromosomes for abnormalities. A doctor inserts a tiny catheter into the portion of the placenta to be tested and removes a small amount of tissue. This catheter is inserted either through the abdomen or through the cervix. The risk for miscarriage associated with CVS is 1%. There is a small chance, about 5%, that the results of the chromosome analysis will be unclear. Amniocentesis is usually done after 16 weeks of pregnancy. Like CVS, amniocentesis allows us to view the baby's chromosomes so that we can rule out chromosome abnormalities. This amniocentesis test involves insertion of a needle through the abdomen and the removal of a small amount of amniotic fluid from the sac surrounding the baby. Amniocentesis has a miscarriage risk of 0.25 to 0.5%. If the testing reveals any concerning chromosomal abnormalities, your doctor or genetic counselor can guide you through the process of deciding whether or not terminating the pregnancy is the best approach for you. In any pregnancy, there is a 2-3% to chance that a baby may have a birth defect. 
Normal results of testing are reassuring, but there is no test that can promise a baby is free of all problems. Carriers of Robertsonian translocation may also benefit from using in vitro fertilization, IVF, to conceive. IVF is a method of assisted reproduction in which a sperm and an egg are combined outside of the body in a laboratory dish. One or more fertilized eggs or embryos can be transferred into the uterus where they may implant in the uterine lining and develop. During the IVF process, there is an opportunity for a type of test called pre-implantation genetic testing or PGT. This test is performed on the embryo before it is implanted into the uterus, and it helps to identify any genetic problems in the embryo that might prevent a successful and healthy pregnancy. PGT can be used to check for monosomy and trisomy in the embryos, and then you may choose to implant an embryo with the normal chromosomal arrangement. This process can help to reduce your risk of miscarriage and of conceiving an embryo which carries a viable trisomy, if that is your preference. Alternatively, the person who carries the Robertsonian translocation can choose to use a sperm or egg donor to avoid the possible outcomes associated with passing the translocation down. Adoption is another excellent option. In summary, if you or your partner carry a Robertsonian translocation, you can have prenatal genetic testing and use assisted reproductive technology to help you have healthy children. There are two types of prenatal genetic testing, chorionic villus sampling, also known as CVS, and amniocentesis. In vitro fertilization, or IVF, is a form of assisted reproduction. Pre-implantation genetic testing, or PGT, can be used to screen embryos produced by IVF before they are implanted. Using a sperm or egg donor and adoption are also great alternatives. Now we'll get the answers to some frequently asked questions about Robertsonian translocations from a board-certified genetic counselor. Could carrying a translocation be caused by something my parents or I did? No, being a carrier is not anyone's fault. Translocations are usually inherited in families. In cases when they aren't, they occur spontaneously by chance. Am I required to disclose the fact that I carry a Robertsonian translocation to my family members? You are not required to disclose your test results to your family. However, your relatives may also be carriers, and knowing this may help with their family planning. If I am a Robertsonian translocation carrier, what is my risk of having a child with a trisomy? The risk depends on which chromosomes are fused in your translocation. Some trisomies are more likely to result in a live birth than others. The chance is generally less than 10%, but you can ask your genetic counselor for details on your specific risk. Congratulations! You've made it to the end of the webinar. Hopefully, the information and tools you've learned here will help you feel less overwhelmed and a lot more prepared for your first session. We wish you the best of luck and thank you for listening.